Zig is a cutting-edge systems programming language fine-tuned for performance and safety, offering a refreshing alternative to C. It stands out with its compile-time metaprogramming, manual memory management, and a no-nonsense approach to error handling. This is a video for devs coming from another language who want a whirlwind tour of Zig, so get your fingers on your keyboards and let's go. Oh, just a quick aside, thanks for 5,000 subscribers. In celebration, I've created a Discord server so I can hang out with you guys a bit more. Link in description. It's important to point out that Zig is a very new language and is missing some key features of modern programming programming languages, including a package manager, reasonable stack traces, and fully featured CLI tooling. Download Zig from ziglang.org slash download and add the Zig binary and accompanying libraries to your path. Install the Zig plugin for VS Code or JetBrains IDEs or install the ZLS language server for your favorite editor. Create your first Zig file with the .zig extension. Zig is statically typed, so variable types must be known at compile time. Declare mutable variables with var or constants with const. Variables are conventionally snake case. Use a colon followed by a type name to explicitly declare the variable's type, or allow Zig to infer the type from the declaration. Zig's integer types can be signed or unsigned and can have any arbitrary bit width. However, usually you'll use common int types like i32. A u8 represents a single byte of data. Zig doesn't have a string type, and string literals can be coerced into an array of const u8s. Characters are treated as single bytes, and thus use u8. Other primitive types include bool for booleans and f16, 32, 64, 80, and 128 for floats. Convert between types using the at as function. Types themselves have the type type. Zig uses all the common operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. When dividing, Zig will use integer division unless the numerator or denominator is a float. There's no power operator, so use standard.math.pow from the standard library, which is imported using an import statement like so. By default, Zig will panic if an operation causes an integer to over or underflow. You can use a wrapping operator, which uses a percent sign, to overflow if desired. Use plus percent for addition, minus percent for subtraction, etc. Apply and assign operators like plus equals have the percent sign before the equals sign, so plus percent equals. All the usual comparison operators apply, like double equals, bang equals, less than, greater than, etc, etc. Zig, like many modern languages, treats errors as values rather than exceptions. Define an error type using the error keyword and an error set, which is a collection of possible error values. An error union is a type that can either be an error or some other type. Specify one using the error type, followed by a bang, followed by the OK type. Use try before an error returning function to immediately return the error from the current function, or use catch and capture the error value to handle it manually. Try is equivalent to catch with an immediate return. The defer keyword will defer a statement's execution until the end of the current block, immediately before the return. Use air defer to only run the deferred code when an error is thrown. If in zig works as expected, the condition must be a boolean. There's no concept of truthy values in zig. You can also use if as an expression, meaning zig doesn't need a ternary operator. While loops run until a condition is met. They also take an optional continue expression which is run after each iteration. Skip an iteration with continue or exit the loop with break. For loops, iterate over arrays and other iterables and use the same payload capture syntax as the catch block we saw earlier. You can iterate over multiple iterables at once, making it easy to track an index using an exclusive range expression. The break keyword takes an optional value, and loops in Zig have an else branch that will execute if there's no break. This allows loops to be used as expressions. Use switch when you need to ensure all possible values of a variable are considered. Each case is its own branch and cannot fall through to other branches. Use else to create a default branch. Like if and loops, switch can be used as an expression. Define a function using fn. Function names, unlike variables, variables are conventionally camel case. Return from functions using return. Zig doesn't allow unused values, so you can ignore any values returned from functions using an underscore. The return type of a function is declared after the arguments. Functions can return error unions, force the caller to handle the error explicitly. The entry point to a Zig program is the main function, which returns void. Parameters in Zig functions are passed by value unless you explicitly accept a pointer. Declare a pointer type using an asterisk followed by the type. Pointers cannot be zero, so there are no null pointers. Create a reference to a variable using an ampersand. Dereferencing is done using the dot star syntax. Like in C, Zig allows you to have four types of pointers. Mutable pointers to constant values, mutable pointers to mutable values, constant pointers to mutable values, and constant pointers to constant values. If the referenced value is constant, you will never be able to modify it through a pointer. The I size and U size types are signed and unsigned integer types, which are the same size as pointers. Use a many item pointer to point to an unknown amount of elements. This allows an indexing syntax, pointer arithmetic, and slicing. A many item pointer may point to no items. Arrays in Zig are fixed size and homogeneous, declared with a specified length and type. Use a number n in square brackets, followed by a type, to declare an array of n elements of that type. Alternatively, use an underscore to infer n from the literal. Access the dot len field to get the length of an array at runtime. If you want to create large arrays, use the array repetition 
phone operator, star star, with an inferred length array. Alternatively, use the standard.mem.zeros function from the standard library to create an array of zero valued items. As a side note, the plus plus operator is used for array concatenation. Slices are pairs of many item pointers that have a pointer to some data in an array and a length. You can iterate over slices as if they were arrays. Create a slice by indexing an array or other slice using a range literal. Range literals with an upper bound are exclusive. Ignore the upper bound to create a slice to the end of the array. And if you'd like to add my videos to the slice that is your feed, you might consider subscribing. Define a struct using the struct keyword followed by key type pairs. All fields must be given a value, though fields can have default values. Structs can contain functions, which take either a copy of the struct or a pointer to the struct as their first parameter. When using a pointer, one level of dereferencing is done automatically within the function, which means you don't need to use the dot star syntax everywhere. You can also declare variables and constants inside a struct. These are scoped to the type and act as globals. The value of these are unrelated to the instance of the struct, just the type itself. When creating a struct literal, you can omit the type if it's well defined elsewhere, like in a function parameter. In this case, simply use a dot instead of the struct name to create an anonymous struct. Anonymous structs will coerce to other struct types that match their shape. If you don't provide field names for your anonymous structs, you create a tuple, which is similar to arrays. You can use star star, plus plus, and access their len field. Access specific indices using the at number syntax as shown. As a side note, these can only happen at compile time. Declare an enum using the enum keyword. Enums can have integer values which start at zero, and you can specify the integer type. You can also override the value of a specific enumeration, and the next values will continue from there. Like structs, enums can have functions and variables. Zig unions are defined using the union keyword and store only one value of many possible typed fields. Only one field may be active at a time. However, you cannot, by default, test to see which field is active. By combining a union with an enum, you create a tagged union, which allows you to switch on a union and capture the variable it contains. Use star value to get a pointer to the value, allowing mutation of the value in the enum. Enum types can be inferred from the union to keep your code dry. If a tagged union has a member with no value, the void type, the type can be omitted. Zig has a special type of union called an optional. Define an optional type using a question mark followed by the type. An optional of type T will contain either T or null, and use or else to coalesce to a default value if the optional type is null. One of Zig's superpowers is the ability to execute Zig code at compile time using the comp time keyword. This allows you to operate on types which have the type type. If we tag a function parameter with the comp time keyword, we can do some metaprogramming to create generic compile time functions. These are typically named with Pascal case as they will return types. You can reflect on types using the built-in at type info function, which returns a tagged union with details about a type. The tagged union is typed as a type info. You can create new types from a type info using the at type built-in function, allowing you to do some crazy compile time metaprogramming that I won't go into in too much detail here. If you return a struct type, you can use comp time to create generic structs, like this node type for a singly linked list. The star star and plus plus operators I mentioned earlier for arrays are only available at compile time. The inline keyword will unroll a loop, allowing you to run loops at compile time. You can also use an inline loop to iterate over a tuple, which can only happen at compile time. Memory in Zig is allocated using a standard pattern, allocators. This allows programmers to see exactly how and when allocations are happening in their programs. Many data types in Zig have to be created using allocators, and there are a few types of allocator in the standard library. See the documentation on each for more details. Typically, memory will be allocated using allocator.alloc, and a call to allocator.free will be deferred immediately afterwards to ensure the memory gets cleaned up. The memory constant in this example is a slice of 1024 bytes. If you just want to allocate memory for a single value, use allocator.create and allocator.destroy. The Zig standard library includes some data types that take allocators to create. Most notable are the ArrayList and auto hash map types. ArrayLists act as a buffer which can change in size. Push to an ArrayList using .append, push multiple items using .append slice, read and write directly to it using .items, and free its memory using .d in it. Auto hash maps take a key type and a value type and have dot put and dot get methods as well as dot dnit and dot count. You can also get an iterator to a hash map using dot iterator. See the docs on auto hash map, string hash map and hash map for more info. There's a lot I haven't been able to cover in this short time including C interoperability, async programming, package management, opaque types, iterators, file systems and more. I'd recommend taking a look at ziglearn.org to get a basic grasp of zig from here. Zig is a very powerful language but again it's important to note that it hasn't reached 1.0 yet, so some things are still missing or liable to change. Want a language that's a bit higher level? You can learn Go in 9 minutes with this video here.